Welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. I'm Eric Svologoy here with Richard Jones. Richard, this is this is something new for us in studio together. This is exciting. I've I, I, I feel the time. need to shake your hand <laughs> since we haven't haven't had any physical contact for what two years. It's, it's, it's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I know we've 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 come into the office together a couple of times over the last few years, but we were usually masked and. Had to keep the six feet difference, but now that uh, now that COVID is sort of on the down down uh, turn, uh, it looks like we'll be able to actually be coming in. I know the parking lot was pretty full this morning too. It's, it's been nice to. It, it feels like we're getting back to some some kind of normal with the number of people that are back in the office this week. It's yeah, great. As a matter of fact, when I was picking up the mail this morning, somebody had sent me a coupon for uh, pizza here in uh, near the office. I don't actually live near the office, so I. There was another coworker in the office that said, hey, you live out this way. Can you use this? And they're like, oh, great. I love that pizza. So, so there you go. I did my good deed. So. There you go. All right. <laughs> well, Richard, of course, uh, I know all these videos we've been talking, of course, remotely and talking all about all the uncertainty in the market. So I guess the theme for this week's edition of Crop Life Retail Week would be some certainty. We're bringing some certainty back to the marketplace. So where do you want to start? You want to start with the equipment market, crop protection? Where would you like to Let's look? Let's start with equipment today. Start with equipment today. All right. Okay, very good. Well, as you are aware, uh, with COVID going on and uncertainty in the marketplace, supply shortages, uh, the equipment folks have had some difficult times getting uh, raw materials for their products. And of course, you know, no one's really been in a buying mood per se, but found out on March 24th that our friend John Deere, their stock price hit a record high, was up 3.3% for that session to $436.28 a share. Now, the reason, any guess? Uh, supply chain opening back up? Not no? really. Basically, okay. basically, what the uh, investors were saying is that the read from them is that higher global crop prices are expected to sp spur more machinery demand in future years. And of course, John Deere, known for their machinery, would be a beneficiary of that. So that's <laughs> why their uh, their stock price is going up, and it looks like there will be a high demand for machinery here in 22 and going forward. That's, that's excellent news, yeah, for sure. There you go. So, All right, well, then let's move on to crop protection. Okay. Um, this wasn't something we talked about, but back in January, the EPA actually put out uh, restriction on the use of Enlist and Enlist Duo herbicides uh, in, let's see, it was 217 counties across the country uh, had to do, of course, with endangered species. Okay. Uh, but I guess now, since then, there has been more data provided to our friends at EPA. And on March 29th, they lifted the countywide bans at 134 counties across the country. Uh, so now Enlist and Enlist Duo can be used in those places. And as you might imagine, uh, the trade groups were very happy about this. American Soybean Association, American Farm Bureau Federation, National Corn Growers Association, and National Counting Council all said that they think this was great news. And Brad Doyle, who is the president of the American Soybean Association, said, County line bans had growers in these areas anxious and frustrated when the announcement came out in January, especially in a market where inputs are scarce and costs are sky high. We appreciate EPA hearing our concerns and working to quickly restore access in many counties where science and data support doing so. So again, that was that was good news. And of course, now with this, uh, with, Richard, with this uh, example there and EPA living lifted the bans in these 134 counties. The other 83 counties that still have bans on Enlist and Enlist Duo, um, you know, these trade groups are, are hopeful that those bans will also be lifted, hopefully in time for, uh, you know, application season. Well, if, if certainty is a, a topic for the week, then uh, the reliance on science and, and data and numbers, that's, that's an encouraging sign. These, that, these days with all the uncertainty out there and to get one back like that, that's that's great news. Yeah, and especially, of course, we've been talking about, uh, you know, the, how tight supplies are for glyphosate and uh, glufosamate liberty uh, in the marketplace. So having Enlist as an option for these 
growers in these areas, these 134 counties, will definitely be great news. Excellent so. news. That's great. All right. Yeah. You're, you're two for two on the good news this week. Yeah, yeah. well, actually, going. and I have another one, too. Right. Uh, folks in ag, of course, might remember Bill Northey. He was the Secretary of Agriculture for the state of Iowa, a very important state in uh, the ag community. Uh, now, we found out uh, this week that Bill Northey is going to become the CEO at the Agribusiness Association of Iowa starting on May 1st. And as I said, Bill is well known in the ag community. He's an Iowa State grad, go Cyclones. Uh, he had a farm, family farm in Dickinson County uh, that he apparently still uh, farms today. He worked with the Iowa Corn Growers Association and was the president of the National Corn Growers Association, 95 and 96 and then was the Secretary of Agriculture for Iowa in 2006, 2010, and 2014. Uh, and then most recently, he was the Under Secretary for Farm Production and Conservation for the USDA, and that term ended in January 2021. So uh, Bill had to say, I'm excited to be asked to have the opportunity to serve as AAI as its new CEO. Uh, AAI is made up of leading agricultural companies in Iowa, working to promote Iowa agricultural opportunities and support Iowa farmer and agribusiness leadership on improving Iowa's environment. So again, more good news. Uh, one of the bigger trade groups in our, uh, our country that deals with one of the larger agricultural states in our country is now getting a very well-known and well-respected leader coming May 1st. Absolutely. And and as you remember, uh, Bill was uh, uh, came out and did a presentation for us at the field day at uh, Tech Hub Live last summer, I believe, right? Uh, I believe, yeah, that's right. I had forgotten that year. Right. Thank you. It, it seems like last summer was a million years <laughs> ago, <laughs> but you are yeah. correct. So yes, you've heard him talk. Mm -hmm. I know I wasn't there to hear him talk. I think it was at some other some other something right. going on right. at the time, but uh, your impressions of Bill at the time? Oh, it was great. It's it's great to have uh, somebody who's so ingrained in ag in a role like this. So uh, a friend of Tech Hub Live as well. So maybe, okay. we'll, maybe we'll see him this summer. I was going to say, possibly come back with a, uh, a new title behind his name. So Great. All right. Well, Richard, uh, unless you have anything to add, uh, we will jump to your favorite segment. I can't think of anything I can tap dance to avoid this any longer. So <laughs> it is time for fun with numbers. All right. All right. Now, Richard, of course, we've been talking a lot about uh, positive things. And this, I guess, will be enough, something more positive, of course, for agriculture. Uh, you know, fuel prices have been going up. Everybody knows that. I paint at the pump. They've been talking about that a lot. Yes. Uh, and in particular, our friends out in California are paying very, very high prices. As a matter of fact, uh, on five, about $5 a gallon sort of seems to be what the average is for gasoline prices in the state of California. Uh, and as you might imagine, they some drivers there are looking for alternatives. And one of their options is E85, the uh, blend of 85% ethanol, which is made from corn, of right. course, and gasoline. Uh, now, that has become a very popular choice in California because about $2.20 a gallon cheaper at the moment wow. than gasoline. So, um, as you might imagine, between 2020 and 2021, ethanol usage in California was on the uptick. Mm -hmm. So your fun with numbers question is, what percentage between 2020 and 2021 did E85 usage in California increase by? Okay. Was it 10 percent, 18 percent, 55 percent, or 85 percent? Last week I went high and uh, that worked. This time I'm going to go middle, so I'm going to say C. 55%? 55%. You are right again, oh. my friend. <laughs> uh, according uh, to California, E85 usage uh, was 62.5 million gallons in 2021, and that was up 55% from 2020 when it was 40 million gallons. Uh, and then those other numbers, the 10% was just added in. 
Uh, 18% was the increase that uh, ethanol usage in, or ethanol, E85 usage in California was uh, up between 2018 and 2019. And if you go from 2021 back to 2018, the increase is 85% in usage. When it was only in 18, it was only 33 million gallons. So there's where the numbers. Congratulations, yeah, sir. You're doing great on this. I'll tell you what, this multiple choice is, is the way to go. I'm All right. Well, I'll have to make it a little tougher because I know we have viewers who love to hear the buzzer and they haven't heard it now for a couple of weeks. So. You could just drop it in just for fun. <laughs> so anyhow, hopefully uh, you viewers enjoyed this week. It was uh, It was very nice to actually... Look at the news stories this week and find a lot of very, very positive reinforcing uh, items that we could share with you. So that, That's great. Let's, let's see if we can do it two in a row this week. We will definitely All try. Right. So thanks for joining us this week for Crop Life Real Retail Week in studio. I'm Eric Sulagoy, Richard Jones. Thanks again. We'll see you soon. Thanks. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We will try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.